Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com with a full case break of 2023 Bowman's Best Baseball. Pick your team three. Brand new release just dropped today. Big thanks to this group for making it happen here on the 17th on a Wednesday. Pick your team three. If you have up three next year, that means you won those teams in that update break. Adam, you've got official last spot mojo with my Dodgers and there's everybody else. Thanks everybody. Ethan and I are talking a little bit about the salary cap in baseball. Does that Would that actually help? Salary cap wouldn't wouldn't help the A's. Ethan's arguing that well, less money for the big teams. Less money for the big teams would get to get big players would limit other teams that can afford big names, allowing for teams like the A's to get cheaper deals for big names because no one else can. I think, I, I get what you're saying, Ethan. I think in a I, perfect world, I think that would be the case. But that implies that teams like the A's were interest, are interested in spending money in the first place. I think it's divided up into to owners that are willing to spend and owners that are cheap not willing to spend. I think in a salary cap market, I think that would that would tell them, hey, since the big teams are limited, I could be even more cheap. And I think the, the teams like the, like the A's, I don't think they're actually interested in, let's kind of scoot this over a little bit. I don't think they're actually interested in, in, in improving the roster. You're also suggesting that every team is interested in the team. But many owners are not interested in interested in decent guys on that could help a roster improve. A's they're going to move to Vegas and they're going to double the money. They're going to double the money, the value of their team. Here's what I see in the NFL, Ethan. Ethan's saying, hey, that's true, but you don't see any stacked teams in the NFL with a salary cap, and if a team has a lot of good players, big names have to take pay cuts to make that happen. Correct. And you know what else happens? That means, that means any good player you develop ends up going elsewhere. And you can't retain those players because they price themselves out of that your team. So a team that a player that you drafted and you trained and you home grew, you're like, ah, oh, now I can't keep them. Now they're too good. So I got now I gotta trade that player away, let someone else take that team, take that player that was a fan favorite, and now you hurt the fans by trading away a uh, a popular player that you couldn't that you couldn't afford because of all the other positions. And because you're you're busy spending a quarter of your salary cap, if not more, on the quarterback. So now you you're all, you almost feel like a college basketball team in the one-and-done era where, you, where, where a team has no identity because no player stays on a team for more than five years. No team identity except for maybe the quarterback who gets signed to the big deal. There's Otani, speaking of which, this is what kind of sparked this whole debate here. Salary cap, does that actually help baseball? I don't know, sometimes you kind of want to see a stacked team. You want to have like a team that can stay together for a good period of time, create a, a generation of, of Raiders or Packers. Imagine if Devontae Adams, if they could pay Devontae Adams and Aaron Rodgers, keep him happy, have that team together. That'd be a lot of fun to watch. There's Nukua, Puka, Grego. Shortstop for the Phillies. That's going to be for Gary. There's Matt McLean, Astral Projections. And there's Dylan Head, 87 out of 150, one of the big Padres prospects here. Ethan saying right, but I meant by bigger names to scrap the league. Make it hard for the same teams to make the playoffs every year. Give all teams a decent shot. 
Yeah, I suppose so. So what, give, so spread Otani, Freeman, Mookie Betts out between different teams? Does that make those teams more interesting? I feel like a lot of people in the NFL will complain about how there's too much parity, so it just creates a bigger middle class of teams. And so it's just kind of, in a way, there's really no team creating dynasties. Or There's Mac Hovarth. Although it's harder to build an NFL roster, but that's for the Orioles, that's for EA. So Gunnar Henderson. But I think I think it would be fantastic if the teams have a decent time to make the playoffs. They do. The expanded playoffs, I think, is one of the most generous in professional sports. So now with that incentive, that should incentivize teams to spend money, right? But the cheap owners will stay cheap. And they, they even then, they won't do it. They won't spend money. Why aren't the Orioles spending money? There's Brock Jones, Tampa Bay Rays. That'll be for Michael. Spencer Jones to 150. I think there should be a salary floor. There's an Adley Rushman green mini diamonds, 99. And if you can't, if you're, if you can't afford the salary floor, sell the team. What happened with the A's is that they have a cheap owner. I think that's what it is. That's all it is. You can. What's wrong with the MLB is that they allow John Fisher to retain ownership of that team and refuse to spend on that team and then claim that, oh, fans don't want to come and see Oakland baseball. We'll do an autograph and uh, hit recap at the end of this. Salary cap or not, John Fisher is not spending money on that team. Even with the opportunity to get better players for cheaper because of the salary cap, all right, spreading talent around, I, I, I believe that he would never spend that money anyway. No matter what the average payroll or whatever will be, I think he will always be in the lowest percentile of spending money. Yeah. Well, you know what he's doing. Guess what? He owns the building. The A's will only play in that stadium, Ethan, 82 times a year. 81 times a year. Not the playoffs. That's only 81 days out of a 365-day uh, calendar, right? Guess what else that stadium's going to do, Ethan? It's going to have... It's going to have... Uh, WrestleMania. It's going to have concerts. It's going to have other... It's going to have... Uh, what else is it going to have? It's going to have the rodeo. It's going to have conferences. It's going to have... All sorts of other things happening. Motocross could be there. They're going to fill up... You know, they're going to fill up that stadium with events the rest of the year. And guess where that money is going to go? Into John Fisher's pockets. So 81 divided by 365. That's 22% of the year is going to be for Oakland A's home games. You know, the other 78% there's going to be all other revenue building things that are non A's related, but stadium related. No wonder he's so excited to build his own stadium to fill with other events where he can make money that he will not put into the A's. Nice Jackson Holiday to 199. Baltimore Orioles, EA, and Daniel Guarate, Brewers.
You don't get why Oakland fans showed up when they found out they were moving just to protest it, yet wouldn't show up during the rest of the year. Well, because then they're putting money into the pockets of a greedy and cheap owner. Uh, Jimmy has the Brewers. They'll get that one. They have to have events in Oakland too, right? No. Have you seen the Oakland Coliseum? No one's booking concerts there. No one's booking extra events there. And that stadium is county-owned, not owner-owned. So the ownership would not get any money out of whatever the stadium does in non-A's games. Here's Cam Collier. Autographs. It's going to be for Gary, the Reds. I mean, the Oakland Coliseum was was is easily regarded as the worst stadium in professional sports over the last 10, 15 years. Here's a mini diamonds, Colin Hawk, Davis Martin. There's Roman Anthony. Now here's the here's the here's the uh, crappy part. He does have the money for a stadium. Why is he not? building that in Oakland because he knows that that if uh, he moves that say if he moves to Vegas that his that the value of his team probably doubles almost instantly the new stadium would be his pockets more money it's Gabriel Gonzalez to 150 Seattle that's for Ryan yeah Raiders play the Raiders played there since like the since the beginning, maybe. And here's Axel Sanchez, 16 out of 150. Nice, Seattle. That's going to be for Ryan. Yeah, Raiders owner Mark Davis hates John Fisher. With the, with the passion of a thousand suns. The burning passion of a thousand suns. John Fisher continually made it impossible... Um, because they both leased the stadium together. John Fisher made it impossible for for the Oakland Raiders to, for them to build a stadium together. Yeah, and now they'll be neighbors. Mark Davis is livid. <laughs> There's had there has been some unflattering quotes that he's made already. I mean, he pretty much told the story. He was just like, he's people are like, ah, oh, what do you think about John? He's like, you know what? That guy effed Oakland and their fans. He's like, I never wanted to leave Oakland. I wanted to build a new stadium in Oakland. I wanted to get out of the lease and start the process of building a stadium and arena or maybe even co-build that with Oakland because we needed their help. And all they did, and I think the A's at that time had, had, had like the deciding factor in the lease or something like that. And he said that they decided to continue that lease, railroaded the Raiders into, into any attempts to make a new stadium or partner with making a new stadium, giving them no options, or f much fewer, you know, not very good options, and then that, that precipitated the move. Meanwhile, John Fisher and the A's, you know, I don't know, they, they made a lot of, it's gonna be interesting having them in the same town, that's for sure, in Vegas. But it'll be funny that they're going to be neighbors. Yeah, it's a sad story. I mean, I, I, I know... You know, Oakland, Oakland County is not exactly a place that's flush with cash, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of passionate sports fans out there, and it's a shame that they're going to get, they're going to lose, I mean, even the Warriors moved across the bay. Here's Junior Caminero, Tampa Bay Rays, Michael Golder. Right, yeah, I think that's going to be an interesting battle. There's Emmanuel Bonilla. Now, when the new, uh, you know, when the new A stadium is there, what kind of events? Because right, 
Think about the Raiders Stadium. They're only hosting eight, nine home games a year, right? What do they do the rest of the time? I think, I think uh, nice Paul Skeens here for the Pirates, John, with Pittsburgh. I think they'll be, you know, obviously the stadium sizes are going to be really different, so they probably won't be competing for the same events. There's Bryce Eldridge. Because I think the A stadium is supposed to be a lot smaller. 48 out of 99 on Bryce Eldridge for the Giants. That's going to be for Darren. I think big part of... No, I don't think so. I don't think it was a FU specifically to Mark Davis. John Fisher moving to, to Vegas. At least I don't think so. It seems more like, hey, here's, a, here's an opportunity for me to go to a new market, build my own stadium, bright, shiny new, new stadium in Vegas. You know, go to maybe... More, more desirable part of the world for, for rich people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Here's Davidson Gutierrez for the Mets. But I think just Fisher saw an opportunity for a place where I, hey, I can build a stadium. I, I'm in a fun... Emerging market. And here's Orange Taj Bradley, 20 out of 25. And I'm going to double the value of my team. Same with the Chargers. Think about the Chargers. They doubled their value. There was probably already a billion dollar franchise when they were in San Diego. Nice Spencer Jones for the Yankees. It's going to go to Tristan. But uh, I think. Uh, I think Spano's constantly made it difficult to build a stadium outside of, outside of San Diego. You know, a lot of people will point to, oh, they, they did a vote. They did a vote to see if they wanted to keep the Chargers. The people didn't want them. But I think that vote was only extended to the city limits of San Diego proper, not San Diego County, which I think would have been completely different. Outside of Vegas, is there another city that has a minor and major league baseball team in it? Mm. No. Maybe. Well, the, the Dodgers uh, rookie ball team um, I think the Dodgers rookie ball team is in Rancho Cucamonga, which is only about no traffic, only about 45 minutes from, from uh, Dodger Stadium. That, that's a rookie ball team or a single A team or something like that. Single A team, I think. I think Great Lakes is the rookie ball team. But I think Rancho Cucamonga is a single A team. Um, and I think where the Aviators play versus where the A's are going to play, Vegas is... Population-wise, it's not as big as LA, obviously, but the city is pretty widespread. It probably would take about 40 minutes to get from that part of town, north, I think northeast, northwest part of town to where they're building the A Stadium in the southeast part of town. So across town, that's about 45 minutes, probably the same. But I think the Aviators are a triple-A team, right? I think there are, there are teams that have other minor league teams within, right, exactly, exactly, Ethan, so, yeah. So there are teams that have minor, their minor league teams pretty close. I think it often makes sense, sometimes you'll have major leaguers do a quick rehab start on like a, on their single A team, you know, and it's good to have them close by. Do I think they'll change the logo much? I doubt it. Everyone thought the Ra Raiders were going to change the name and logo. But the A's are a team that has so much history. Over 100 years of history probably, right? So to change it now, I think would be... Would, would, would kind of suck, I think. Or if they do change the name, I hope that... Uh, I hope that they let Oakland retain the Athletics name and logo and all that. But I doubt it. I, I feel like I feel like they 
88 out of 99. Here's Masataka Yoshida. But I don't think veg, veg A's, you want them to go with Veg A's? I don't think that would be a very good name. I think they'll do stuff like that in like marketing. They'll kind of incorporate sort of A's puns in there. But, but I think for the most part, they'll probably, if they, get, if they have like a Nike City Connect jersey or something like that, maybe that will be more related to, the, to Vegas itself. But I think their main, their main uniform, I doubt, will change. Yeah, much further away. I mean, not that much further away, but it's far, far enough away. It's across town. Here's Emmanuel Bonilla. It's Toronto. Evan, how, how was I supposed to say it, Toronto? Toronto with this one. Vegas? Vegas? I don't know. I don't know if that rolls off the tongue nicely. I'm sure there will be a lot of teenagers who think that's going to be awfully funny. There's Felnine Celestine to 250 and a Caden Wallace for the Royals. It's going to be for Gary. There's Felnine Celestine, who's supposed to be one of the Mariners' big prospects coming up the ranks. Ryan, the M's. Junior Cameron Arrow, mini diamonds to 299. And there's Dean Jorge. For the Rockies, that'll be for Gary, won that team in the filler. After this break, Ethan and anyone else who's curious, I think we should have a little bit of time. We're close to the top of the hour, but nice Dalton rushing. One of the big Dodgers, one of the many Dodgers catcher prospects they seem to be collecting over the years. This will be for Adam and the Dodgers. Very nice. I think one of the top prospects in the organization and one of the top pitching or top catcher prospects in all of baseball. They should just say, you know who already has uh, Vegas Aces? The WNBA team, the world champion WNBA team are your Vegas Aces. Which is owned by Mark Davis. But yeah, I'd be, I'd be uh, not ashamed. WME team got it first. They're world champs. And the world champs, something the A's can't, haven't been able to claim for a long time. Um, I think it was really smart for them to, for the WMB team to, to get that name wrapped up. Um, I, I don't think they'll change. If, if it was any other team, you know, without the kind of history that the A's have, I think they change their, their, I mean, maybe they will, I don't know. It doesn't seem like there's any rumblings of that, though. I mean, the Minneapolis Lakers went to Los Angeles, kept the name the Lakers, even though not very many lakes in Los Angeles. There's some, but not thousands of lakes.
All right, next. A soccer team. Did Jose Bautista bring a soccer team? I don't think I don't think it's an it's a it's a major league soccer team though. But I'm sure that's not too far away if, whenever MLS expands. Or say a Suzuki to 199. Soccer team they'll probably play in a. They'll probably play in a, in at Allegiant where the Raiders play. Because UNLV now plays there, unless they play where UNLV used to play, the football team. Um, oh, by the way, really nice Ethan Salas. <laughs> Greg Dash, Padres. And here's a Seiya Suzuki for the Cubs, Dennis. To 199. Kind of crazy to think that. Oh, nice Masataka Yoshida masterpieces autograph. That's for Todd, and the Boston Red Sox. It was a strong season last year. It's Michael Harris to 250, and he reveals a Nikau Puka Grego. Phillies, Gary. Yeah, that she is really nice. But it's kind of crazy to think that Vegas is going to have. Vegas will eventually have NBA. I think the next, the next time, and Adam, I want to say Adam Silver has all but said that we are going to expand at some point, right? And LeBron James, it says he wants to be part of the ownership group, if not the owner of the next expansion franchise. There's Davis and Delos. I think he should just buy the, buy the Cavs. There's a nice Delos Santos going to Michael and the Diamondbacks. Yeah, I think the NBA will expand. I think they're at 30 teams right now. I think they want to get to 32. I think I feel like that's a nice sweet spot for um, for American professional sports, 32. That's what the NFL has. I know base, Major League Baseball wants to get to 32. Hockey's already got to 32, right? With the Golden Knights and the Seattle Kraken. That gets them to 32. More teams mean more money, Ethan, for the league. More teams mean more money. More revenue to be made overall. More, more games to put on TV. I feel like the general consensus has been Seattle will get the Supersonics back. And then the Vegas will have a team. And then they'll move Memphis and... Uh, Minnesota over to the east because I think they're con they're they're considered they're still in the west right now both of those Uh, yeah, I know. Someone uh, who was saying this, I think um, Buffalo Braves this is a sick logo. Um, I want to say that um, I have a, we have a friend, I think uh, I'm sorry. I think um, I think I think uh, Gilo, who is our who is our resident Kansas City fan and supporter, he's like, hey, why isn't Kansas City? We got baseball, we got football. How come we don't have a, where, where's our basketball team? You know, the Kansas City Kings used to be out there. ABA days or something like that. So
But yeah, I'm not sure if basketball is going to get back to Buffalo anytime soon. I, I think they've been saying Seattle and Vegas move Memphis and Minnesota to the east and then redo the divisions and then go from there. Um, baseball, now that, now that the A's are going to uh, Vegas and now that the uh, Tampa Bay Rays have their stadium situation sorted out, allegedly, which I'm personally not a fan of a fan of where they're reloc or where they're building their new stadium. They're kind of staying in the same area, which is kind of difficult to get to, but I guess it's part of a big long-term redevelopment plan. But now that those two stadium situations are figured out, and some of you may have seen that Amazon has bailed out the Diamond Sports Network. So that might actually help with two things, with, with some of those markets getting... Um, yeah, Amazon will invest in Diamond Sports as part of its bankruptcy uh, restructuring agreement. So you know, there's like a number of teams, 11 baseball teams, 15 basketball teams, 11, 11 NHL teams. Ha they have their Bally Sports Networks interrupted because of the bankruptcy that that media company has, has been going through. And this includes like, you know, teams like the Rangers, the Royals, the Padres, you know, Diamondbacks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think they're going to save those media rights there. Which may re, which may finalize the remaining free agents left there. But once all, once that was squared away, the two stadium situations and TV stuff. Once that gets squared away, here's Machado to 75. Baseball is going to look to get to 32 teams. Here's Fraley and Carnacion for Boston. That's for Todd. Now the big question is where are those two expansion teams going to go? I don't have a clear picture of that just from all the reading and research and listening that I've done over the over the years. That seems to be wide open. Really, Ethan saying there's some rumors here in the past couple of years that we're selling the Sabers in Buffalo and trying to get a basketball team because their owner pays no attention to the Sabers. Sabres make horrible revenue. What's the value of the, the Sabres, I wonder? Here's Amborius Tavares and Bo Bichette back there. Here's the thing. The values of those teams are still so great that the owners really don't have to make revenue in order to, to keep the valuation of the team. Although hockey might be different. Uh, that goes to the Braves, Joey Pruitt. And this is a nice Corbin Carroll shellac. You can kind of see the word shellac in the background there. Some of these can be autographed too. This is a fun little insert. That's going to go to Michael and the Diamondbacks. You know, Ethan, though, if, if, like, if Seattle didn't exist and if the Vegas market wasn't so attractive right now for, for sports teams, and just the ease of travel into Las Vegas. A nice Corbin Carroll mini diamonds. And Dalton Rushing, another one. Another Dalton Rushing for Adam. And the Dodgers, little Dodger Joe Mojo. But unfortunately, I don't know if a basketball team's going back there. Now, if Seattle already had a team, and if, if Vegas wasn't a hyped up market, I could see markets like, you know, I could see markets like... Uh, that used to have an ABA team, you know, get a basketball team, an NBA team, and that would be pretty interesting. Another Corbin Carroll mini diamonds for Michael. Nice, all those add up. But I guess hockey's a little different. I don't think they carry as much kind of crazy value as, and here's a Braylon Tavera. Future teammate of Gunnar Henderson someday. EA with that one. I don't know, maybe maybe teams, maybe hockey teams, franchise are a little bit different, but yeah, I guess they could be sold. Does that mean a basketball team will get back there? That'd be kinda of, kinda of cool, but bring back the Boston Braves logo and all that, which would be really awesome.
be cool to see it happen though. I think Vegas will eventually get a Major League Soccer team, too. Are they on the list? So I think Austin, oh, Charlotte got a, got a uh, Major League Soccer team. I think, I think St. Louis is supposed to have a soccer team. No, I think they, yeah, I think they made their debut this year in 2023 as an expansion team. San Diego is going to have a soccer team in 2025. And that's it for now. Current expansion candidates. So they're at 30 teams now, right? However, after the San Diego was awarded the 30th team in May, the uh, what, commissioner said, I don't think sitting here today that we have any plan in the near future to go beyond 30 teams. Okay, so it looks like they're going to sit at 30 for a little bit. But I think Vegas and Phoenix, according to this Wikipedia article, is, is, is stated as being potential uh, potential expansion teams, which I think would be kind of cool. Buffalo, Ethan, would, would Buffalo take to soccer? I think there are cities where you least expect it has to have taken to soccer pretty well. It'd be a natural rivalry, maybe, with the Toronto and Montreal teams. It'd be kind of cool if it was just like, you know, if it was like Buffalo FC and you lose, you use all of the old, old minor league soccer team. I mean, the stadium has to be indoors. I think the MLS season is during the summer anyway. But if there could be like a Dome Stadium or something like that. That could work. In England, they play soccer in the snow. Uh, there's Mike Bove going to the Brewers. That'll be for Jimmy. Be kind of cool to see a Major League Soccer team in Buffalo. Call it Buffalo FC. Maybe take over the name of the Minor League team, and then use all like kind of use Braves, uh, old Buffalo Braves ABA logo and coloring, which would be kind of awesome. Sixty-one out of seventy-five. Juan Abrido for Cleveland. That's for Gary and the Guardians. Cleveland, this is for you. They're we they're rescheduling soccer games because of the rain. You gotta watch English soccer. They're 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 playing rain, sleet, snow. You know, rain. Little little summer rain, and they're rescheduling games. Here's Paul Skeens. Shall act for John and the Pirates. Gunnar Henderson. Ooh, nice. 124 out of 250. Shellacked on card. Auto Drew Jones. That's for Michael and the Diamondbacks. One of their up and coming prospects. That's a nice looking card there. Save that for a little social media picture time here.
Ezekiel Tovar, and Daniel Montero, Padres. Greg. Nice Ezekiel Tovar, 36 out of 50 for the Rocks. That's going to be for Gary. All right, final box coming up. Thanks, everybody. I don't think we have any other orders coming. I've been keeping an eye on orders. That's why I've been kind of kind of uh, stretching this break out a little bit because I, we got we got time. No, nothing selling out. We can take our time with this break, and we can have some nice conversation in the chat as well. So I think that's nice. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if you want to establish, you know, especially since, I mean, in the summertime, what are you doing? There's no baseball in Buffalo. You have to go all the way out to Montreal, Toronto, drive down to New York for baseball. That makes it kind of tough. You know, a major league soccer team, to have a professional summer league team, a soccer team, I think would be pretty cool. They could play in the uh, Bills new stadium. Are we excited about the Bills stadium? Yeah, I guess we'll have to, unless, you know, unless people uh, want to sell out that absolute right now, I'll do it. Even though we're over 11, past 11 right now on the West Coast. I'm down to do it if it sells out. I already have the case out here anyway. Yeah, best bets from Buffalo to go to a baseball like Toronto, Pittsburgh, or Cleveland. Yeah, I think the big question now is like, who's gonna, who are gonna be the expansion team? The new Bill team is gonna be wild. I'll bet you could put an MLS team in there in the, off in the uh, summer. You play there. Ah, that's right, Eric. East Coast, three hours ahead. 11 o'clock West Coast, 2 a.m. East Coast. That is how time works. I think I want to say, someone have to, may have to fact check me on this, but I want to say that there is a time zone that doesn't go by the hour. That's like there's like half hour. Here's Welbin Francisca. Cleveland, this is for you. Gary with that one. Yeah, I was hoping so too. Listen, if there's a, if we've seen it happen before. If there's a wild late night rally where that absolute two box break sells out, you know, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen where someone's like, F it, I just bought 24 spots. In a break. Here's Tommy Troy for the Diamondbacks, 1999. Prince Michael with that one. So if you want to do that, I'll do it. Here's a Fraley and Carnacion for Todd and the Red Sox. Maybe someone was thinking, uh, Joe's probably going to go to bed, or he's going to call it because it's already past 11, and he's not going to want to do another break. I will. If it's absolute, I, all other breaks will be tomorrow. But if it's at that two-box break of absolute, I'll do it. Jaspiescasebreaks.com. There's a ton of spots left. So I'm not going to hold my breath for it, but if you want to do it, I'll do it. So I'll put that out there. If you dig deep, if we've got a few people that knocks out 25 spots together, and again, I've seen it happen before, so I know it can happen. I'll do the break. I like these him inserts here. I'm him. I'm him. EA. With uh, Jackson Holiday. Uh, what day is tomorrow, Ethan? My, I was out of town last week and, and switched some days and took a vacation day, so I'm all mixed up. There's Eddie Beltre, Padres, Greg. Adley Rushman, Masterpiece, Casey Schmidt. We got a Jackson Holiday shellac. We got a Rafael Devers to 25. And ooh, our final auto is a dual auto and a Corbin Carroll right here. And it's a it's gonna be a randomizer. Wow. 
Thursday, okay. So tomorrow I'll be on Fanatics. Thursday I'll be on Fanatics Live as usual. And then I switched one of my days with Jason. So I'll, Jason will be off on Friday and I think I'll be on YouTube on Friday. So you got a, you got a special Friday YouTube day with me. All right, well, we're going to end the break like this, I guess. Well, first of all, there's the Jackson Holiday Shellact insert. We got the, for EA, the Adley Rushman Masterpiece insert. For EA, we got the Corbin Carroll Rookie card for Michael, which is really nice. We got the Raphael Devers for Todd. Here, how are we going to end the night? We're going to end it with one person really happy and one person really sad. So this has got to be a randomizer between the Mets, Jimmy Black, and the Dodgers, Adam Kupperman. Good luck, guys. Let's flip back to a uh, let's flip back to a clean list. New dice. We'll put the uh, New York Mets right there. L.A. Dodgers right over there. The team on top, after three on the dice roll, gets the dual auto. Fingers crossed. Good luck, my friends. One, two, and three. After three times, goes to the Mets. Adam, the Dodger Joe Mojo did not work that time. Sorry, man. We'll get him next time. But uh, Jimmy, with the Mets, won that team in the filler. After three times, won that team with the filler. Lands with the Mets. You get this great dual autograph with Kevin Parada up top, Diego Cartaya on the bottom, 12 out of 25. Nice low number on that dual auto. First dual auto I've seen out of this best. There you go, congrats. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching, thanks for breaking with us. We may as well do a quick little recap here too. There is, Ethan. You can join me tomorrow. If you have uh, an iPhone, you can download the uh, Fanatics Live app. And even if you don't have, even if you have an iPhone, you can still use the web browser uh, version as well that I just dropped into the chat. That's for Android and iOS. I know a lot of even Apple users, iPhone users like the web browser app because they can still use their phone for other stuff and then watch us on their desktop or laptop or whatever. So I'll be there tomorrow. It's a different crowd. You know, different crowd and a... Uh, I want to save one of those Dalton Russians to... And a, kind of a really easy way to buy, which is, might be a little scary. But it's a lot of fun. We do this. We do group breaks there. We do uh, do even. We even do a little more, a few personal boxes here and there as well, as opposed to YouTube where we don't do a lot of that. And I've got the Drew Jones and the Dual Auto as well. So some nice hits being pulled out of here. Thanks everybody for watching, for breaking with us. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye bye.